Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again, and Happy New Year! Hey, there's a COVID vaccine rolling out around the world. <laughs> but there's also a new strain of the virus spreading around the globe, too. has been an interesting case study in what to do with your big budget movie during a worldwide pandemic, and if the year has shown us anything, it's that very little works. Obviously, this is a James Bond channel, the focus is on James Bond, and as such, I'm going to be running through a few different options that the upcoming Bond film No Time to Die has in 2021, and kind of my own personal take on what the likelihood is that we're actually going to be sitting in cinemas, or indeed at home, and experiencing the new James Bond adventure in 2021. Goes without saying that this is is pure fan speculation and if you have any thoughts and opinions on options that I'm going to be talking about during this video or even ones that I don't mention then please do leave a comment in the comment section below but we're going to get started with one of the first options that people talk about as a potential option for these postponed movies is that they could go to streaming. Uh, but the problem is that nothing else seems to have really succeeded with that all that much. Uh, Universal making a big thing about it early on in the pandemic with Trolls 2, but less so later on in the pandemic. And their big franchise tent poles, such as Fast and the Furious and Jurassic World, are sticking to theatrical release dates, and so, so far at least, and... All of the stuff that has been moving to streaming in a big way, and I'm talking about, you know, your Disney's and your Warner Brothers, they all have the obvious reasoning of, well, Disney and Warner Brothers have their own streaming services, and dropping new content on those services instead of letting it all back up and, you know, pile up for the theatrical release window may actually work out well for them. Maybe. Wonder Woman 1984 is probably the most direct comparable with James Bond, obviously big budget franchise, a leading character, very recognisable in the public consciousness. It's hard to judge exactly how well the film has performed. It opened in cinemas where such places are open in the world, and it's streaming in other places, and maybe the number of subscribers that it drives to HBO Max in the US will be justification enough for it to have released in this way, and Warner Brothers have certainly made a point of saying that all of their previously theatrical only 2020 releases will be going to HBO Max as well, but they already seem to be backtracking on that due to pushback from production partners and talent and so forth, and really each and every case is a different story. Different companies have different expectations, different contracts resulted in expectations of back-end bonuses, and so on. With No Time to Die, MGM have the distribution rights for North America, and then Universal has distribution rights for the rest of the world. So immediately you already have uh, two companies having to deal with each other there. But my main point in bringing up both of those is that neither have a natural streaming home in the way that Warner Brothers does with HBO Max. I mean, yes, Universal has Peacock, but that's only in the US uh, as of time of recording. One of the most frequent comments I see on the situation regarding No Time to Die is something to the effect of, ah, oh, they should just put it on streaming, or, you know, they just put it on Netflix. And I mean... There are a lot of reasons why that may not happen with this current situation. Now, there are an awful lot of armchair box office analysts out there, and far be it for me to add to that discussion anymore, but without a natural streaming home where MGM would want to drive subscribers to, or any of the established streaming services coughing up enough big money for the rights to No Time to Die, the film is stuck in a kind of limbo. But this does bring me to my next topic. It's come up a couple of times during 2020 that MGM has been, you know, putting itself out there for sale, and as a result of that, obviously MGM own a pretty big stake in the James Bond film rights, and if they were to be bought by a bigger company, maybe that bigger company would gain something out of putting No Time to Die on a streaming service. It's important for me to stress here that I'm not an industry insider. I'm not purporting to have any serious indication of where this is going to go, but I'm a fan reader reacting to news that I see, and I'd hazard a guess that if a company like, let's say, Apple were to buy MGM, there's a very good chance that we'd see some kind of streaming cinema hybrid release for No Time to Die. Obviously, they'd want to drive subscribers to their own streaming service. I don't think that the film would ever go completely streaming because there's still a good deal of money to be made releasing it into cinemas, and Eon obviously have a big, if not the biggest, say in how Bond films are released, and being the traditional traditionalists that they are, I would assume that they would be pushing for a theatrical release, but again, who knows, and the plan for the time being seems to just be... 
There's obviously a desire from everyone that some kind of normality is achieved as soon as possible, and as such it's clear that the most hopeful course of action is to just keep postponing the film until audiences can return to theatres en masse around the world. This is apparently proving to be costly in and of itself, so it's certainly not the easiest option, but there is a lot of hope involved that in doing nothing, the film will eventually come out in a world where it can achieve something close to what it would have achieved pre-pandemic. Now, obviously the world has changed, and it's not going to be an overnight thing that we suddenly, you know, suddenly we don't have COVID and everything is back to the way it was. I mean, who knows when audiences will return to theatres along the lines that we did, you know, before the pandemic, and Warner Brothers' release of Tenet has served as something of a cautionary tale in powering through with a traditional theatrical release during a pandemic. The film certainly made a good bit of money, but certainly not as much as it would have made pre-pandemic, and as a result of that, other studios have had second thoughts about just powering through where they can, and there's a certain amount of anticipation and expectation about, well, who is going to be the first big movie out of the trap, and in Inevitably, this isn't going to be a case of, like, like everything isn't going to be back to normal uh, overnight, like I say. Whatever the first few movies are that do release traditionally, they're probably not going to make as much money as they might have done previously due to, you know, public reluctance to go back into such a public space as a cinema and so on. And in No Time to Die's case, I can't imagine that an April release is going to look much better for them than, like, a November 2020 release would have done. So, is another postponement on the cards? I've seen a lot of speculation that a postponement to November 2021 for No Time to Die is a likely possibility, but the elephant in the room there is that the next Mission Impossible film is due to release in November 2021, and it, I mean, that's quite possibly the most direct competition Bond currently has in the space, so I can't imagine that they'd want to release it so close to that, and then later in 2021 is already looking quite packed with a bunch of other films that have postponed, so there isn't a clear and obvious win for the film here, I don't think. There is, you know, they could move it to summer 2021, but then the last time a Bond film was released in summer, it was License to Kill, and that film underperformed. So I think there might be some reluctance there. Some films just generally do better with if their release is timed to a certain time in the year, and there might be reluctance for Bond in the summer movie space. And again, this is me just speculating as a fan. I do not have a direct line to the E.ON officers or the MGM board, I'm just speculating based on the news that I see, but this does however bring me to my... I guess in summary, all I can say is that there's no obvious win for the film here, and I'm very much talking about this release in terms of what can be successful for the film. I have no doubt that there are fans out there who just want to see the film as quickly as possible and they don't really care how they see it. I'm obviously, I don't know if you can tell, rather invested in this franchise and I want it to be a success. I would like the film to make money because then that will ensure that there are more that come along and more products and all this kind of th stuff. I, I, I think obviously there is going to be a gimme if No Time to Die does not perform as well as let's say Skyfall and Spectre did beforehand, there's the obvious gimme of, well, it was released, you know, pandemic time and, and its final box office numbers will be judged against that. So I, I have a feeling that, you know, this isn't going to be the end of the Bond theatrical experiences. I have a feeling that they are still going to keep on going. And I think there's some solace to be taken for big budget movie fans like myself, that big budget movies are still being planned and shooting and being made, Spider-Man, the opening Spider-Man film being an example of that. If there is a quantum of <laughs> potential wisdom that I would like to try and get across during this video, it's that I feel that all we as fans can really do that is the most healthy course of action is just to be patient, really. I mean, I I like I've said this in other videos I don't have many philosophies in life but the one main philosophy that I try to live my life by is to not get too invested or annoyed or, or about things that I have no power in changing. I am completely reactionary in this situation, as are probably most of you who are watching this video, unless you are at the Eon offices, and if so, hi Michael, hi Barbara. Um, but as, as a result of that, all we can really do is be reactionary and be patient and wait for the film to come out. It will come out eventually exactly where we see it, and when we see it, 
who knows? But really the main reason for me making this video is so that if, if, if we get to like February, March time and they still go full steam ahead for an April 2021 release and they re start releasing new trailers and posters and stuff and if I get really excited and start to genuinely believe that the film might actually come out in April, send me back to watch this video <laughs> to tell me not to get too excited about it because the rug might get pulled from underneath us once again. But what about my own predictions? Well, I'm certainly readying myself for another the theatrical postponement. I don't think the film is going to be coming out in April 2021. I think it is going to be pushed further, but in terms of, you know, what happens after that, it'll be down to the fate of MGM and the theatrical distribution landscape. Um, it's all a bit too uncertain at the moment, but uh, I'd say that the chances of us seeing No Time to Die in April are about as good as throwing a double six on your first roll of a dice. I actually rolled a double one then, which is, uh, yeah, perhaps quite telling of what the, um, of what the situation might be. You aim for a double six, you get a double one. That's 2020 all over, isn't it?